Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for joining. It's a great pleasure to be here today. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you have a driving license, but I kindly ask you to fasten your seat belts because this is going to be a quick one. Uh, my name is Paul Silva. I'm a security researcher and pen tester at Char49. Uh, but I've started as a software developer. I did it for more than 15 years. What it was plenty of time to do all sorts of mistakes. I'm also co-author of something that you may have heard about, like the OWASP API security top 10. Uh, but the topic here today is another one. With us, we, we have David. Yeah, so uh, my name is David Sopers. Um, I'm a security researcher for a long time, um, more than 15 years. I especially like research and uh, focusing also on high level pen testing. Uh, I usually I already spoke uh, on events like RSA, DEF CON. Uh, this is my first time here in Vegas because the first time I spoke on, on DEF CON it was on safe mode, so I was at home. Not that fun, but still I did the shots with my friends, so shot the knob. Um, and besides, and props to besides Lisbon with some guys over here. Uh, I did some API security methodology. I don't know if you guys know it, Mind API. Uh, it's part of my open source work. Uh, and that's it. Let's start. Before uh, some of the work that we, the research that we are presenting, um, I would like to say that uh, this is not, uh, we will not teach you how to hack uh, web applications or APIs. Uh, all the target uh, manufacturers you presented have a bug bounty program, responsible disclosure program, or whatever. So um, this is, everything was reported to the organizations. Some of them were like late to respond, but in the end we, we did it. Um, we will we'll focus this presentation with nine brands. I hope that at least uh, one of them, it's your, your car manufacturer, um, but let's start with this one. Uh, I don't know if you know this, this brand, but we will not mention it. Uh, it's a vulnerable uh, outdated component, but before that, I would like to tell you a, a little bit uh, about the um, API uh, and the API world, which means uh, you have a lot of API architectures. I'm talking about the most popular ones, like REST, GraphQL, uh, RPC, you name it. Uh, all of them uh, make sense to, to mention that most of the vulnerabilities that were present was focused on these architectures. Um, open API is one of the most common ones. Uh, usually it's like connected in a way to uh, Swagger. I, I hope anyone knows Swagger. I, I believe everyone knows Swagger. Yeah, okay. So, um, the problem is that uh, it helps out developers and even pen testers and researchers because it documents everything uh, and uh, you, it will help you not to, to make any mistakes and leave the documentation open. But uh, one of the things that, uh, because usually individuals like shiny things and web interfaces, Swagger UI is one of them. It's the most popular one and usually is left uh, publicly av available. Uh, this is the example of uh, a Swagger Pet Store, but like every software, uh, it also has vulnerabilities. So um, especially the vulnerability uh, from 3.71, which is a cross-site scripting, which allows you to put uh, uh, a specially crafted uh, JSON uh, file uh, that you can control and put a cross-site scripting payload, and you can do a lot of a lot of stuff with that. This is the classic example of a, a, a Swagger UI, which is presented uh, on the brand that I showed you. Uh, this is come to a reminder that uh, if you use third, use third-party software, please uh, keep it updated because it can be a way that attackers can achieve to get into your organization. This brand, which is, I, I, I'm guessing nobody here has this brand in their garage. If so, kudos. 
um, it has a vulnerable outdated component. This time it's not um, Swagger, but we we found that uh, a subdomain on this company um, have uh, immediately caught our attention because we saw a form and we like, oh, okay, form. Let's try to approach this the security research way. Uh, we immediately went to the inspector because it's faster than trying to do some proxy stuff. Uh, we noticed that it was a WordPress because it has, has a lot of tips like WP content, WP plugins. You can use, for example, for enumeration tools like WP scan, but in this case, we immediately saw that uh, the plugin that we wanted um, and we could see if any vulnerability could be in place. Uh, and it was. Uh, this subdomain from, from this manufacturer uh, uses uh, use W3 Total Cache. Um, it was a vulnerable version, uh, and this was very cool for us to test, especially for uh, this manufacturer that I don't know if they could, like, offers a, a good reward, like a car. But, uh, this is the CVE from the plugin. Very cool. So it's vulnerable to uh, you. Could, you could read arbitrary files from the subdomain, um, and the main goal here, okay, let's to create the POC and to respect the responsible disclosure program. Let's like grab WP config and drop the database details and tell them, hey, this is the your database. Okay, so at least the credentials, uh, and that's what we did. So. This is the, 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 the exploit. The first thing that we wanted to know uh, and to play around with the file pad uh, was to see what was the operating system running. Uh, so we do the curl, put the full uh, URL, the, the plugin place, the vulnerable parameter, which, which was the subscriber URL. So we put etc issue just to see if it, it's running Linux, and it was. It, this is the, the, the response it's below. So it's Ubuntu, not the latest version, but it doesn't matter. But they give us, with this operating system, gave us clues to understand the path and the configuration files for other stuff. So moving forward. So now we, we noticed that it's uh, running virtual hosts. So we did the patch conf. It's like going through to see how we can get, get the full path, uh, internal path for um, the WordPress uh, installation and get the, the WP config sites enabled. We didn't. We we needed to know the the, the domain itself, so we tried it. And in the end, after uh, like experience, because sites enabled usually it's the subdomain, we tried the, that on the subscriber URL and we got the document root, which was this one. And with that, we just try just WP config and we got the database from this high level uh, manufacturer that uh, in the end decided to tell us good work and it fixed it. Another brand, this is my favorite because uh, uh, it's a brand that I'm very close to um, and we found out some cool stuff like Bola, Reflective, uh, cross-site scripting and again, uh, components that are vulnerable. But uh, it's, easy, it's very hard sometimes to get VINs from cars, as you can see. Uh, usually it's placed on the windshield, but you can also try other, sti other things like going to Google and search for VINs. Uh, and we did that. Um, not only that, we decided, okay, let's see if we can create uh, um, on this manufacturer account dashboard. Um, add these cars without any confirmation. So we create a persona, which is Ji Wang, um, and we added a, a bunch of cars, uh, like you can see on the picture. Sorry, it's in Portuguese. We are from Portugal, so it's automatic translated, but it's, it's, it works in every language. So we added these cars uh, on other brands, uh, and I can, I can tell you that uh, like on the nine manufacturers that we tried, at least three, uh, you need to confirm on the infotainment top inside the car to have the car uh, added to your dashboard account on the car, on the car website. In this case, like, you can edit and get information from, this is the, 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 um, the information you added without any interaction from the user inside the car. So 
that's a big issue. Some brands tell you that, no, it's, it's normal, but you can see in, uh, uh, after a while that it's not. Uh, so, on this information that we get on the UI dashboard, uh, you know that you, you have an outdated car, for example, uh, you can see the versions from the infotainment system. Um, you can see um, issues related to guarantees. If you paid for uh, uh, years for to have more guarantee uh, on your vehicle, uh, also more information that what you need to do when you go to a, uh, an inspection car. Um, but one thing that we noticed is that, is that we could get more information on the API that was not present on the UI. And this is cool, okay? So uh, we try that. And by the way, with this endpoint, which is already fixed, so disclaimer, um, we can, you, you don't need even to be authenticated. This is like public information. Uh, on the API, we can get odometer, fuel, battery status if it's electric, oil life, tire pressure for each wheel, for, our, for each tire, and etc. You can see the screenshot on the API. This information is not present on the UI, by the way. So uh, we get that. Uh, it will be cool, like, to get, uh, uh, for example, on this manufacturer for a friend, and you can go check out the USVIN and bet with him, okay, if I know the exactly number of kilometers that your car has, you buy me a beer. So this is win-win. So. Uh, other information, I think that's, that's another endpoint that we found uh, using um, our intersection, only using uh, a proxy, uh, was like type of vehicle, which is in the car, not that relevant. Uh, so model, one thing, and I put the smileys on, Wi-Fi hotspot, very cool. I love cars with Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, also, if it's connected to the internet, even better. Uh, and as you can see, we can do a lot of things, uh, especially with the Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, we can wiggle, wiggle. So I got the hotspot from the, 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 sorry, the broadcast MAC address. I grabbed it uh, and go to wiggle. And then we get location from the vehicles. Uh, and that's very cool uh, because I'm talking about millions of these manufacturers, but it works also for other brands. So this is like crazy. Um, firmware update is something that uh, we still like a work in progress uh, because on a, this specific request, we get information from firmware, but not only that, we can download it, uh, unpack it, uh, and what we did, is just, I mounted on my operating system, I noticed what was the operating system running on the infotainment, it was Armand's, but I didn't check for more information so far. I was focused on the API stuff, so uh, I, I moved forward. Uh, recalls, this is something that the manufacturer was like, uh, tell me that this was an acceptable risk. Again, I don't understand why, but I will explain that later. Um, the recalls, uh, it's something that the information that it comes is very juicy because especially you know if the car was like uh, had problems with something uh, and get information about that. But not only that, uh, we noticed that one of the fields returning on the response of this API request was the description part. And it was uh, maybe used by an operator, a mechanical part, I, I don't know. I don't know who used it, this, this, this field because uh, most of the PYY information that we got was added to this field. So I, I found out something like, uh, please return the car to the, home, uh, for, uh, to the owner at address with his phone and everything. So uh, this is like public information according to the day's manufacturer, but it's, you can see name, location of the, the, the owner of the car and everything. I communicated that to the manufacturer. He told me it's normal, so maybe. It's, it's kind of weird to, to receive sometimes these kind of responses, but uh, okay, so what? 
um, with all this information together, we can do a lot of stuff. Okay, with all that, we can track devices uh, to pinpoint locations. We can place, for example, uh, some uh, uh, antennas on specific spots and try to track uh, vehicles. Uh, analyzing odometer, for example, you, you can create, you can know routines from, from the, 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 the habits from the victim, for example. Uh, insights from, from everything, how much fuel, and you can calculate uh, when the, the, the person needs to go refuel or something like that. A lot of stuff. Recall information gives you PYI information, so it's, it's, uh, it's crazy, but yeah. Uh, and by the way, yeah, outdated components, again. But not only one, the GIF is like loading, it takes a while, because it's, if it doesn't work, oh, okay. It's, this is all for the same manufacturer, halfway, and still done. That's it. Um, they control uh, the documentation and the third-party software very well. So uh, I think that's it. I think to Paulo. Okay, from now on it's with me, I believe. Uh, the point here, we, if this is not a full assessment on car manufacturers. We are not uh, trying to assess car safety. Uh, this was like a free time to assess how car manufacturers handle their digital asset security. So we were looking for few bugs that we could chain together and prove them the impact. So this is why you're, uh, you're going to see a lot cross-site scripting that we can chain with something else. Uh, and prove them the impact and get the system patch, patched. So another manufacturer, I'm not sure uh, how many of you are familiar um, with the return URI uh, query string parameter, but when I see one, I get excited. Uh, probably I'm gonna get uh, an open redirect, but then I have an, an additional feeling, maybe I can get the cross-site scripting, which is even better, and all we have to do is change the URI scheme and change from HTTP or HTTPS to JavaScript and we get a cross-site scripting easily. And uh, chances are that we can uh, access cookies or local storage using our um, cross-site scripting and probably the alt token is in there and we can use it to exfiltrate the token. So this is how we prove the, the impact here. It's a quick demo. So you can use it on a phishing, uh, email uh, with the malicious payload and as soon as, as soon as the victim logins, we get the alt token. So this way, they, it's not only a cross-site scripting that probably no one wants, are willing to fill, to fix. Uh, there's a, there's the, the impact here to exfiltrate PII, and this is a, a bigger deal for the manufacturer. Uh, but usually you also find, let's call it less interesting stuff, like clickjacking or UI redressing. Uh, if you're familiar uh, with it uh, or not, what we have on the screen are the same, but there's some red fields, and those fields we are loading the login form on our own domain, attacker.com, and we, uh, the red ones are fields that we put on top of the, the legit login form. So this is why redressing is how the attack works. It's not that fancy, and probably no one is going to fix a UI redressing, as long as you, ha you can prove the impact it, it may have. And chances are, this is just uh, an hypothesis, that the same, the same company or organization has a subdomain uh, pointing to an AWS cloud front, and when you request um, some resources from it, you realize it comes from S3. Not sure whether you're familiar with S3, uh, it's a cloud storage, uh, you can put there, uh, they are called buckets, you can put there whatever you want. One of the features is hosting static websites. Uh, but S uh, Amazon and S3 permissions are not that easy, and quite often uh, we choose to go with the star. We allow everything to everyone. Uh, S3 has a public API, REST API, you can read the docs online, uh, and chances are that we can write to the bucket uh, I'm not saying that, that that was the case, but chances are you can write to the bucket and upload whatever you want. And if you have a UI redressing issue, maybe you can even deploy the login form, uh, do, deploy the, the, the malicious login form on their own uh, subdomain. 
and this is how it would potentially look like to exfiltrate credentials. So you can upload whatever you want to a public S3 or at least internet facing uh, S3 uh, bucket. Then we, you get your UI redressing uh, page deployed on the subdomain. Uh, the victims fill the form and you get the credentials on your, on your own server. This is exactly what we have in this demo. So uh, with the, the impact proved, they, they fixed it. Otherwise, probably they would look like to it like a UI redressing, no one cares. So let's move on to another manufacturer. Uh, and you may, may be asking yourselves, uh, why didn't you fuzz to find new endpoints? We did it. Um, and we found something called site, uh, SiteMinder. We were not aware what SiteMinder was, and we asked ChatGPT or AI. You may, the AI yeah, you may be missing the AI buzzword. And ChatGPT told us it's a widely used access management and authentication solution developed by uh, CA Technologies. Okay, so it's a third party software, but you have a domain pointing to it. So we did uh, what uh, this company was supposed to do. We checked for CVEs. One of them was a cross site scripting on SiteMinder. So you may know where this is going to end up. Uh, just crafting a simple payload. Uh, it's an image on the username parameter, uh, running some, some code, some JavaScript code, and you get the cross site scripting. But Instead of a single site minder, they had tons of them, so tons of chances to exploit cross-site scriptings on this uh, car manufacturer. So moving on to another manufacturer. This is the, another, another uh, time when I get a 404 not found, uh, my, my heart starts beating faster. Because this is again a AWS S3 bucket, and when you get the 404 means that someone deleted the bucket and buckets, they, the name should be unique across all AWS uh, regions. So if the bucket was deleted, but there's still a subdomain pointing to it, you can create the bucket and you're gonna control, you're gonna get control over the content that's served on this subdomain. So this is a subdomain takeover technically, uh, but we need to figure out in which region the bucket should be created, where it was created um, before. But you, if this is not magic, you can use several tools to do it. Uh, checking the DNS, you get the region, it's a uh, European, uh, Europe Central. You just create the bucket, upload the content, and from that moment on, you're serving uh, content, whatever you want, on the, on the organization subdomain. This is, to be honest, this is quite common uh, on S3. Uh, so uh, keep, keep watching your subdomains, monitor what, whatever uh, subdomains you have, buckets, your assets, uh, but before moving to the next manufacturer, still uh, cross-site scripting on Swagger UI, so you're going to find them deployed everywhere, and no one cares about uh, vulner non-vulnerabilities on this, on this software. So let's move, move on uh, to another manufacturer. We were looking to Porsche, it's not a secret here. Uh, we found out this website called Porsche Experience. We looked under the wood to understand how it worked. It's a single page application backed by a GraphQL API. So this time is not REST, but we not noticed something quite strange. The out token was included twice on the GraphQL request, both on the cookies and in the authorization header. Uh, it depends how familiar you, with, you are with uh, HTTP. But adding the auth token on the, the request header is a game changer in, in terms of cross-site scripting. If the API uh, picks the auth token from the cookie, cookies are managed by the web browser and they are uh, automatically added to the request. So we came up with the idea, maybe we can exploit a cross-site um, request forgery. Let's see, let's see if that happens or not. To do that, the API should get the auth token from the cookie instead of the authorization header. And that was what was happening with the GraphQL API. Then we need the API to be willing to fulfill requests coming from um, or started from uh, another origin, which the API is also willing to do. So we still have some uh, cross-origin request uh, sharing issue here, misconfiguration on the API. 
But then browsers include several uh, security features, uh, namely on to protect your cookies. And the browser, they were not willing to include the cookie on requests started from uh, external origins. So it was like, okay, there's no way here, it, it's a dead end. But in fact, uh, cross-site scripting would make this a great, a great issue. So instead of one, we found three cross-site scriptings in different websites. And we decided to go with the campaigns.porsche.com for a phishing email. It sounds kind of catchy if you can offer something on a campaigns.porsche.com. So this is the vulnerable URL, the parameter. You should keep the integer for some reason, uh, but you can then append the uh, HTML. So this is the loader we're gonna, we're gonna add to the URL that we're gonna send to victims to load a JavaScript file from a remote server. Then we have to do some encoding because you cannot, it's not that easy to manage spaces and special characters on the URL. Uh, and this is what's fetched from our remote server. So we're gonna do a GraphQL query, uh, fetch victims PII and exfiltrate it to the remote server. Then we just need to trick victims to click the URL. So offer them something like a Porsche experience, why not? And this is how it goes. So we are, whoops. We are waiting victims data, so let's email. Mail them, we get the click. So as you, as you can see, I read the emails. Then I click them, the links. And from that moment on, we get the PII on our remote server. Again, the point here is not, uh, none of the, the issues here are that fancy. The point is chaining them together and prove the impact. And this way we get all of them fixed. Uh, so, yes, and, <laughs> I know you. <laughs> so we talked about uh, subdomain takeover. So this is another, another subdomain takeover on a different manufacturer, but here the, the issue is a bit different. Uh, in this case, uh, and sometimes if you want to integrate uh, with some third party, they're gonna say point uh, subdomain to our own uh, domain or subdomain. They create a custom subdomain so that you can point something to, to them. But then at some point the company um, gave up on the, the, the product, but your, your DNS record is still pointing to, to their, their own. And if it was a bucket and they just deleted their bucket, we can create the bucket. That was, that was the case here. There was a DNS record pointing to another company and the company gave up on the bucket and we created the bucket and we got our content delivered uh, through their buckets. So again, Swagger UI, so if there's a, a big takeaway today, go home and check whether your company has Swagger UI deployed or any other third party a uh, piece of software and check whether uh, there are known vulnerabilities and patch the systems. So time for another one, nothing fancy again, just a cross-site scripting on Swagger UI. Uh, so we've talked about uh, misconfigured AWS uh, S3 buckets. So here's another, another use, use case, the same issue, uh, public writable um, S3 bucket. So the same thing, you get your, you get your own codes uh, running on their, one of their subdomains, and then you can access uh, APIs and uh, other stuff uh, because you're running on their one subdomain. So uh, most of the policies can be bypassed uh, or will be bypassed uh, this way. So we just got our content. Again, we use a phishing email. It's, I believe we asked ChatGPT to write it, uh, not exactly give me a phishing email because otherwise we won't get it. Uh, but as it happened before, with this simple trick, we get uh, the auth token that we can then use. In this case, I believe we got the, it was PII from, from the API. But that was not the only one issue with this manufacturer. As David said, you have a vehicle identification number, you can get them from your windshield. Uh, so let's call it public because anyone can get it from your car park, from the car park. Or if you're lazy enough, as we are, you go to Google, you search, and you get 1,890,000 uh, vehicle identification numbers. 
and then you can add them to your, to, you can use the API to fetch PII, driver's PII, owner's PII. Uh, there was something interesting here. Uh, we were not able to use uh, the, this API endpoint uh, before adding them, okay, just a few seconds, uh, before adding one car. We need to be a owner, but we can be a owner of anyone's car. Yep. Just pick the VIN, add to your account, you become a owner, and from that moment on you can do thousands of requests to uh, just uh, scrape the data from the API. Uh, maybe you're lucky and you're gonna get again a cross-site scripting from some uh, redirect URI and you can do the same magic we did before. Okay, I'm not sure we're gonna be, we're gonna have time for all of them, but those are quick. We'll move forward. Let's see if you have SiteMinder, go home and patch it. Uh, we have 91 instances of SiteMinder in the same company, so go home and so fix conclusions. it. I'm, I'm very fast. Uh, just to tell you, uh, you have the table with all the information. Uh, organizations subscribe to vulnerability databases, of course. Create a safe harbor for us, hackers, so that's very cool. Reply to our emails. It's for everyone's security. Uh, AI won't make your assets safe, but only safer. That's a QR code if you want a promo on API security training. So that's it. Thank you.